What's going on YouTube? It's Mike here. It's been a while, but today in this video, I'm back and we're talking about the upcoming iPhone 7. So it's a new year and that means a new iPhone isn't too far away. To be exact, it's eight and a half months away. And that time is going to go pretty quickly and it's a matter of fact that we're already seeing a bunch of rumors pile in about what is going to be featured on the next new iPhone. Now I'm going to break down everything we're going to be talking about but there's a few key things. The first thing is the headphone jack, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack being completely eliminated. A thinner, more sleek design with a possible new material used for the back other than the current aluminum. An upgraded 810 processor and of course the two screen sizes but potentially bigger than 4.7 and 5.5 inches. So first up is actually losing the headphone jack and this is huge because the headphone jack has been present since the original iPhone that came out in 2007. Now there's a couple reasons why Apple wants to do this. The first major one of course is to make the device thinner because that's the only thing that's keeping the iPhone at its thickness today. It's just because that headphone jack is so wide on the bottom. If it's eliminated it can actually make the phone thinner and when it's removed from the device it makes more room inside of the device for more internal components. That could mean better battery or a bigger and better and faster processor, you could kind of go any which way with it. So what does this mean for us headphone users? It would basically work wired through the lightning port and Apple would include ear pods with instead of a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the end of the cord, a actual lightning cord that would be plugged in. Additionally, I think Apple wants to push wireless earphones as well and it's been rumored that Apple's going to be making some wireless ear pods that you would put in both ears and there would be no cord that would connect to the two of them. So they'd be these little tiny individual Bluetooth earbuds that are also supposed to come with an included carrying case which will allow you to charge them. They're going to have a few hours of playback and of course since people won't be fully accustomed to using Bluetooth headphones yet and those earbuds probably aren't going to catch on too quickly you're still going to want to charge your device while using wired headphones with the lightning port, so it's also been rumored that Apple is going to enable wireless charging with the new iPhone 7. That should be interesting. Next up is a much more thinner, lighter, and more sleek design. Now, I don't know how much it will differentiate from today's iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, but we can definitely see it slimming down and looking a lot sleeker and nicer. One of the first major rumors is that Apple's going to change the material used on the back from the current aluminum to some other material, whether that be glass or who knows what the heck it'll be. Um, it will actually allow for the plastic antenna bands, which I always thought were just absolutely gross looking. It will allow them to finally disappear, which is great. And by advancing in-cell panel technology, there will also be more room within the device to actually slim the device down, making it thinner. There's also been rumors that water and dust resistance will be improved as we saw a little bit of water resistance with the new iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. This is always a really great thing to hear, but don't go thinking you're gonna be able to take a swim with your iPhone because that's just not Apple-like, unfortunately. As for what the iPhone 7 is officially going to look like, or what we think it's going to look like, we just don't know yet. Not enough parts or speculations have leaked for us to kind of get an image of what it will look like, but you could probably imagine it to look a lot like a slimmed down iPhone 6S. Moving on to that new A10 processor, which is supposed to be manufactured by TSMC. No Samsung involvement there, kind of like we had this year with the 6S TSMC Samsung mishap. It would strictly stick with TSMC, but this brings a couple things to the table which have been questioned about RAM between the two devices, the iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus. While the iPhone 7 will most likely offer 2 gigs of RAM, which is currently featured in the 6S and 6S Plus, it's been rumored that the 7 Plus will actually feature 3 or even as much as 4 gigs of RAM, which is double what the standard 7 would be which would be a huge selling point for the 7 Plus and convince people, of course, to get the bigger phone as Apple wants to more transition into selling bigger phones. The new A10 processor would, of course, be the fastest on the market, that is, before they introduce any new iPads later that month, but it would make it the fastest, and I can only imagine considering the 6S and 6S Plus are so speedy today with their A9 processors. It's also been rumored that there will be a 256 gig storage option for the 7 Plus, while the standard 7 will only be available up to 128 gigs. Apple, why don't you just cut off the standard 7 altogether and just put out a 7 Plus? And keeping the two different phone sizes in mind, Apple will either stick with the 4.7 and 5.5 inch screen sizes, as Johnny Ive was discussing in a recent interview 
with 60 minutes that he felt that those sizes were perfect, Apple may be looking to scale things up a bit and go with a bit bigger. So maybe we could see something like a five inch screen on the six and as much as a 5.8 or even six inch screen on the seven plus. That would just be ridiculous. That's huge, but could be the direction Apple is moving in. It could be a little bit less than that too, but since it's a new year, new phones, Apple may want to move in that direction. Also, Apple is about selling bigger phones because that's the direction the smartphone market is moving in. Smaller phones aren't really present anymore, which is why I've always doubted seeing a four inch iPhone 6C. Every time I, I see those rumors, I just automatically dismiss them in my head. What about you guys? But other than that, that's all we really know right now. As for new features and stuff, I think we'll hear a lot more about that later on in the year. Year. And of course, we'll see a lot more leaks too with new parts, design, and everything like that. So you can expect me to be, of course, covering it right here on the channel. I'm really looking forward to the iPhone 7. We're expecting it to release toward the end of September 2016 and most likely have the announcement uh, the earlier part of the month. Of course, we're expecting the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. It's going to be big. Anyways, guys, that just about wraps it up for this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below about the iPhone 7. What are your thoughts? What do you think about it? Let me know down below. Please be sure to also give this video a thumbs up, especially if you're happy that I am back in making videos. And yes, I'm not kidding when I'm saying that. I'm really trying to get back into this now. I've missed you guys. Um, and of course, be sure to click the subscribe button below as well for more content like this. That just about does it for this video, guys, and I will see you in the next one.